decoration time. And now you can find lots of different pumpkin squash and gourds out there. And I get asked a lot of times, what's edible, what's not? Well, the reality, this picture and these pictures a lot of these are edible and a lot are not so edible. And then all I consider them uh, decorative or ornamental regardless. The gourds in these pictures, most of the time these are considered ornamental because you just really wouldn't want to eat them, not to say that you couldn't. It's just that the flavor and all of that and time invested into processing it wouldn't be worthwhile. Of course, in the cucurbita species, our summer squash, very edible. So scallop, crookneck, zucchini. The reality is that a, kind of the differentiation between summer squash and winter squash is we pick a summer squash when they're immature. So we pick them when they're small, the skin is not tough, and the seeds aren't big because that's how we eat that. And then another part is edible is the squash blossoms. Sometimes I just think it's an excuse to dip something in batter and fry it, but squash blossoms are edible. And if you look at the stems here, you can actually see that these are all male blossoms because cucurbits have male and female blossoms. So once pollination is done, it's easy to pick the male blossoms and still have squash. For eating purposes, and if you buy a can of pie pumpkin, it is actually going to come from these tan colored pumpkins. So here's a good example of just cutting a pumpkin in half, removing the stem, removing the seeds and um, some of that stringy pulp, and then baking them and scooping out that bright orange flesh to make pumpkin yourself. So great edibility. And I've got a picture here of commercial pumpkin harvest. This is harvest pictures that my aunt took. She lives in central Illinois. Illinois is actually the number one producer of pumpkins in the United States. And the biggest reason for that is they process 90 to 95% of all the canned pie pumpkin or, or canned pumpkin in the U.S. And the reason for that is they have processing facilities. The Libby Pie Processing Facility is in Morton, Illinois. And on these pictures, you can see they actually use a lot of equipment. The vines are all gone. They're wind rowing them and have equipment that picks them up into carry wagons. And then they get dumped into semis to be hauled to the processing plant. And I got a kick out of my aunt. She did not realize either that tan pumpkins are what goes into your pie pumpkins. These are cucurbita machata type. So your butternut squash are in this family and anything that's that tan colored or cucurbita machata and most desirable for eating. So here's just an example of the tan cucurbita machata, a pumpkin pie recipe. Everybody has their favorites and anymore you can find recipes for lots and lots of different pumpkin things. One of my favorite is actually called a pumpkin tort, which it's a layered dessert with a graham cracker crust, a cheesecake layer, and then a pumpkin layer and then whipped cream on top. I have the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin here crossed out. Honestly, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins are bred for being jack-o'-lanterns, being decorative, being ornamental. So they're bred for color, they're bred for stems, in some cases they're bred for carving, they're bred for disease resistance. So it's not one that you really want to spend your time on as far as using it to eat. Many edible varieties, so just a picture of some of them. This is a peanut pumpkin, very edible. Jardale is in the center, the green one there, and it's very desirable by chefs to use for pumpkin soups and such like that. This is a banana squash. They can get up to 40 pounds. Delicatata is a small squash, but considered a winter squash and used a lot like you would summer squash. This one in the very center is Long Island cheese, and that's a cucumber and a machata again, and it'll have that bright orange flesh on the inside. 
This one's called Australian Butter. And this one and all of these on the top row are all Cucurbita Maxima types. The Delicatata and this one at the bottom right corner is called Winter Luxury. And those are Cucurbita Pipo. And so this one was actually bred for pie. This is my favorite, the green and white striped Kushaw, although they do come in yellow stripes and tricolor. And this is what I grew up with for pie. That's still what I make pie out of to this day is Kushaw squash. And the last one, this is another uh, cucurbit of machado. So eventually it will turn tan, but at this stage it is called a frog pumpkin uh, because it looks like the flesh of a frog. So cut into that one just like the Long Island cheese and be bright orange in the center. And then we also have varieties for edible seed. So this one's called Silver Edge because of the green and white stripes. It is in that Kusha family, the Cucurbita Mixta group, considered an heirloom, very decorative also, and has those edible seeds. You can see those large seeds with Silver Edge. And then this one is Lady Godiva. And Lady Godiva was known for riding naked through the streets. So they've named it that because the seed is naked. So it's a holeless seed and another heirloom. And also I consider that very decorative. So there are lots and lots more out there that are edible. These are just a few. So if you're curious about what you've picked up or grown is edible, there's lots of good information out there or feel free to ask.